Focusing on data or entities will lead you to designing a system that's hard to change and over time littered with technical complexity. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I'm going to cover why you also need to be thinking about the behaviors of your system and start being explicit. I want to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So this video is inspired by this post on Reddit, which is, I'm working on a school app. The microservices are fairly obvious. Example, teacher, student, etc. Stop there for a second. Why is that fairly obvious? That's our first problem. However, one thing I found is that it's impossible to separate the databases. For example, there are relationships amongst teachers, students, rooms, etc. So I'd have one big database, but separate microservices. Or is there another way to tackle this? It's not obvious at all what the school app actually does. So to decide that these microservices, or rather I'd like to call them logical boundaries, are based on entities of students, teachers, etc. What's the actual behaviors? What does the system actually do? We have no idea based on the post. So therefore, it's really impossible to say what these logical boundaries should be. Instead, if we're focusing on entities like this post is suggesting, we're going to land in a CRUD based system. So I'm running a sample application that I found on GitHub. Make sure to subscribe because I'm going to have another video kind of detailing this particular sample and some of my thoughts about it and related to sample applications what I think. So to illustrate this, the sample application is about a warehouse. It's again, it's simple. And I'm just going to kind of illustrate some of the things here. So we have products that we can edit a new product. We can see that we have things like the name, the description, the price, the weight, and the number of stock items, which is a read-only thing here because you'll see that you also have transactions. So transactions, how it's listing them are kind of in two forms. You can have a transaction that's related to sales. So this is meaning you're going to reduce um, the amount of quantity on hand. And then we can have a procurement, which is basically we're receiving product. So this is going to increase our quantity on hand. And then finally, we have the idea of partners. And this is what we are basically selling when we're creating a, a sales record. It's kind of like the customer. Or if we're doing procurement and purchasing, a partner is also really kind of like the vendor. Now, the sample application is exactly that. It's a simple sample to illustrate some concepts. And you need to understand that. However, it really going back to the thinking about data, if you're building your own system and look at this as the example, this is why this can lead you into trouble. So as I mentioned, when you're creating a sales transaction, you're specifying a customer because that's who you're selling to. And if you have procurement, a purchase order, you're selecting a vendor that's, or a supplier. Now the idea in this sample is what it was illustrating is it was combining those ideas and creating the idea of a partner. Because why not, right? Is that they kind of look the same. They both have a name, an address, a phone number, et cetera, and we're associating them to a transaction. So why not converge those two ideas into a similar concept of a partner? Is that a good idea? Well, in the sample application, yeah, because it's a simple sample. But in a real world large system, maybe not, because the idea of a vendor and a customer are likely very different, even though they may have similarities, things like their name, their address, etc. So to kind of illustrate this more is that we have this partner, and yes, it has name, address, but well, then we also have some methods here for creating transactions. So we're saying if we're selling to this particular partner, we're creating a transaction, we pass in our products uh, and their quantities, and we call create transaction. If we're doing procurement, we're creating a, a procurement transaction, we're calling this method. So you can see that now all of a sudden, our partner has to do multiple things related to sales and purchasing. But those are real in like in the industry, very different things. So if we jump over to a create transaction, you can see now that we have a switch statement that has to decide, okay, well, if the transaction types a sale, then we're calling this method. If we have procurement, then we need to call this method. And in the real world, a large system like this, if it's a customer, may have different behaviors and functionality. You might be able to define credit limits, but that doesn't necessarily apply to somebody that's a vendor, and you likely don't have a vendor that's also a customer. They're really distinct ideas. So rather than trying to turn them into the same thing generically, you'd actually want to be very explicit about a customer and a vendor. So the same applies with the transaction. We had the ability to create a sales transaction 
or a transaction for procurement. And those things were ultimately deciding what our quantity on hand was. So in the sample, again, it's simple, it makes sense, but in the real world, the idea of taking these two things and umbrelling them into a generic transaction really might not fit that well because there's more than just those two ideas of a transaction that can affect our quantity on hand. In the real world, there's also gonna be things like stock counts in our warehouse. Cycle counts or full counts, these are things that are gonna happen that are gonna affect that quantity on hand. So rather than trying to make them generic, fit everything under the same umbrella, you really are gonna be wanna be more explicit about these things. Having a receipt for procurement, having a sales order or an invoice, having some type of stock counts, these are the actual behaviors that I'm talking about. It really is needing to be distinct and explicit about those behaviors and then the data behind it. And I didn't draw it this way, but it kind of is like a little bit of a Venn diagram where we kind of have this transaction, but really we have sales, procurement, warehouse, where they're all gonna have a little bit of overlap and similarities, but that doesn't mean they're the exactly the same thing. And you'll likely get into CRUD, a lot of CRUD, where a lot of the ideas and workflows are just in the end user's heads, but you're not explicitly capturing what they're trying to do. So if I'm editing a product here, and I change the price and I increase it to $60, why am I increasing the price? Do we even know where I'm increasing the price? When I save this particular product, I then have to encode what I have to capture. Okay, is the old price different than the new price? Because maybe I want to do something if that happens. For example, if you wanted to calculate gross margin. In a large systems, this happens a lot. When the user does some type of action, you then need to do something else but you need to start being explicit to do that. If you allow the user just crud, then you have to try to infer what actually happened. Rather, if you give them explicitly saying, I'm doing some type of price increase, some types of price decrease because of a sale, you can capture that and then use something like publish subscribe to notify other logical boundaries that these things are happening. So if you had some type of price increase in sales and the user is explicitly doing that, you're not inferring it, then you can be publishing that event. We could have procurement subscribe to that price increased event and it could be updating its own gross margin that it calculates because it also understands the cost. And this goes throughout your system of understanding what's actually happening. When you receive product into your warehouse from a shipment from some supplier that you had for a purchase order, you'd be publishing the purchase order received event and saying, okay, here's the items that were received, here's the quantities, so that when that happens, that action happens, we wanna do something else, which is in procurement, consuming that event, subscribing to it to understand, okay, this purchase order, we ordered these products, these quantities, yes, all that's received, so now this purchase order is complete. Again, it's kind of this idea of you wanna know when things are happening, because in big systems, that's always usually the case. Something happens, something else needs to happen as a result of that. Be explicit about the concepts that you're capturing. Entities, the customer, the vendor, are they the same thing? Maybe not. Maybe there actually need to be specific, explicit ideas and concepts different. But also be explicit about the capabilities, the behaviors of those things in those boundaries. What are we doing in sales with a customer? We're creating sales orders. What are we doing in procurement with purchase orders? Are they the same thing of a transaction? Probably not. In our warehouse, we have completely different concepts. Capturing those concepts and explicitly what the user's trying to do. What type of business capability are they trying to perform? If you're capturing explicitly what they're doing, then you can be publishing events to let other system parts of your system know this specifically happened. If you enjoy topics like this and you have other thoughts or questions or opinions of your own and you wanna chat with other software developers, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.